Alrighty, so I'll call the meeting to order. And um, Matt. I'll call the meeting to order. Um, um, I'll accept the motion to approve the agenda. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Yes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, public comment. There's nobody here except Brian. And um, so we'll move along. Um, Mike, do you want to kind of take us through this and mm -hmm. tell us when we're supposed to uh, have Brian's slides and have him uh, participate, you know, yeah, at the right time? Yeah, that's uh, item D. That's D, right? That's yeah. Item D. Okay. Uh, the first three items are going to be pretty quick. Uh, item A is the amendment of the uh, 2018 or 2022 TIP. That's the current year TIP that we're in right now. Uh, we need to amend that uh, at the next meeting, February 15th, uh, and approve the amendment uh, on March 19th. That's the program, the Milestone Road, uh, high risk rural road uh, improvements. Uh, it's about $2.5 million in federal aid for, for high risk rural roads. Uh, there's a map of improvements in the packet, and I projected it behind you. Uh, if you want to get yeah, a let's look at it. idea of uh, where those improvements are located, it's... Uh, Where's my double lines? Uh, those are right here, the road center line improvements are at uh, New South Road. Uh, there's a realignment of the Monomoy intersection, as we talked about with the uh, Old South Road corridor study. Mm -hmm. That's being implemented with the bus pull off at Monomoy. Uh, there's a, a short-term... Uh, elimination of that middle turning lane at Pulpus Road. Yeah. Uh, essentially eliminating one of those approaches to Milestone Road. Uh, there's uh, ramp upgrades at the Pulpus bike path uh, crossing. Um, bus pull offs in a number of different locations. No, no, I want to get to this. That's why I'm asking you. Well, I have a question about this. I didn't know you were doing about? that. Uh, um, Tom Nevis. Tom Nevis, that's a realignment of that intersection. Right now it's a, a skewed approach. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, it, it works. It works. Why are we playing with that? What it happened? I didn't hear about that one yet. I didn't That's either. I found that out by accident yesterday. Uh, What's going on with that? It, it was identified in the, the roadway safety audit as, as something that needed to be addressed because of the angle, and if it could be improved, that this is the funding source that could be used to do that. There's also a bus pull. There's a bus uh, pull off right at that same intersection that's being incorporated as part of this improvement. What about the angle? Right, what are they going to do? The, is the bus right? If you're going to towards Gons, the bus pull offs. Right above, it's right, so on the right, up on the top there. of the hill. Yeah, right, right past that. it, up a little bit. Oh, they yeah. can't do that okay. there. Um, Mike, are we just talking about softening the angle so that you can make a, a left turn without reaching over your shoulder to look back on you can't, the You call. can't do that there. Yeah, I have, that's the problem. You just have to yeah. see up there, the it top of it. It doesn't look like it's a major I mean, I mean, it just looks like it's softening the turn. But, 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 Why but, would you but, do that? Okay, but let me it's just explain. I don't want to, Mike, this... This is one of those no, Nantucket things. So well, cars hit your ass anyway. just bear right. Like, they don't have to slow yes. down that much, meaning like to 10 miles an hour, okay? <laughs> Similar to the Pulpus thing, taking a left, which I don't want to get into in this meeting because Linda will get mad. Yeah. But basically, the, the biggest issue here is cars coming and taking a left from Sconset. They, very few do it. That's where the danger is. They're better off because people should go on Chuck Hall. Now, I know you can't make them do that, but that's the preferred, safer way to take a left to Tom Nevis from Sconset direction. Okay. The problem but is going the problem right is, time too. is simple. You just you, you, you barely touch your steering wheel, and you're taking a right. Where did this come from? I, don't, I didn't know I'll, about this. I'll, I'll say the one problem riding a bike is even if you stop at that stop sign, the cars are going so fast right. you can barely get across that road. Huh. I think that's because it they honestly they like yeah. you, they are flying there. Yeah, no, yeah. I in Matt, so I know the, that's the one part I will say about this. No, that's true. Yeah. At least it's not a full like ninety degree right. <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem because yeah. now you're just stopping people in the road almost. That's yeah. stupid. Somebody's going to hit your rear end coming either no, but direction. But Matt's point, I get what he's saying. It's a big if for a bicycle. But, um, it's a long stretch. Yep. If you look at it now, it's a long stretch, yep. and they come flying. They don't slow yeah. down. You can be stopped at a dead stop, 
and they go they go right, right after you. This is dumb. This is also moving it closer up the hill uh, where they're coming over and you don't have time to get out of the way. Much? No, because it's moving the, it up the hill oh, no, farther the and those people are coming over the hill fast. Yeah, no, see, you don't the, have any no, time. The pre-existing curve is already there. You if can they're see it's very do, light, but it's yeah, up there. Yeah, it's but if they're going to do it, they should move this thing down <clears> the hill, not up the hill. Take this and move it the down land. the hill, not up the hill. Right. Do we not have the land? You need more room to get out. One question at go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me just, just go ahead, Mike. Uh, Are you? Matt's exactly right. This was the intersection I was identified during the roadway safety audit. Because of the oh, crashes God, along this roadway, the state came down and identified the whole corridor and looked at op uh, opportunities to improve safety. Uh, so Matt's absolutely right. And number one, it shortens the crossing distance of the intersection. It slows down the approaches to the intersection, which you probably shouldn't do anyway for uh, yeah. to, to make that turn. So you don't have the conflicts between bicyclists and the crosswalk. No, somebody's going to hit your ass um, on coming out of town. So that's all right. for all those reasons. And just to address the the grade, the uh, GPI, who's the designer uh, of record, would state they did, they did do some supplemental intersections based on comments that were submitted by staff. Sideline uh, issues. Uh, they did do some supplemental just to verify that the sidelines will be maintained by by doing this this uh, realignment. Oh. No. Okay, no. I understand, Mike. I, it, we're part of the real world sometimes a little more than we realize is happening. It, it, you know what I mean when I say that. Now the other part that I would say is the <coughs> public reaction to this, mm -mm. which I always worry yeah. about with us, especially yeah. you, but. Us with what are they doing now? That kind of oh thing. God. You know what I mean? Gonna be screaming yeah. about That's it. what concerns me. Is this going to happen? Happen, or is, is this federal state money, or is this a uh, this project like will be a, a, a preliminary public hearing probably in March mm -hmm. uh, that we usually do with all federal aid projects? Um, uh, and, the, and this project needs the whole corridor, the, all these improvements need to be advertised by. GM. But I didn't know we were going further than nobody at Farm Road. I didn't either. I'm just saying, I didn't. Okay. In the better thing, it never, we never got past. In fact, I wanted to make their thing part of the, my double line plan, yeah. and you said, "Well, there's other stuff." I think you were talking about this as a separate, you know, you know, okay. uh, what am I trying to say? The this studying this up. area was not part of better. It right? never came up. Um, well, we did look at this. The roadway safety audit in this form that we went through, and that was included in the back. We did review it in traffic safety yeah. and verified all the recommendations that were going to be listed in that roadway safety audit with traffic safety. This was a solution that, we, that was in there. Um, there are issues with the utilities, uh, so some bracing needs to be mm -hmm. done. To, to uh, right now, you have guy wires that come. Uh, a transformer uh, mostly in that existing intersection. Yeah. That's going to the guy wire system is going to need to be changed to a push pole. Yeah. Uh, and that's how you move the guy wire to the other side of the utility pole. Um, but th those are easily the overcome engineering issues. Yeah. Uh, I, I, oh. I'm really trying to understand the, the crux behind doing this improvement. I, do, I do think you have a number of different versions. Well, Matt's point is the only one that makes any sense. I think that other than that, I don't see anything except no. what he said. Yeah. <laughs> I do agree with what he's no, saying because what happens is the, the bikes have to look to see system. what's coming yeah. from a long distance to yeah. cross. Because it isn't like just the width of the traveled way; it's longer than that. It's a, it's tough. Yeah. I get that, and even coming the other direction, to be totally honest with you. When you come down there with your car and you go to look back towards Scotia, you can't see anything coming hmm. because you you headed the wrong way. Yeah, but that this helps a lot. But but can I finish what I was yeah, going to say go before? Ahead. Yeah. Go if ahead. you're going to do this, Mickey Mouse, which we never talked about when we were talking about all the other ones around Mid Island. It should be at the lower part of that entrance, not the upper part at the entrance. You need as much room to see, as Jack said, up to that hill, hill with exactly. them coming over Bean Hill at 100 miles an hour. And I'm, right. I do it myself when I just got, I got to get out of here so I can get cell phone reception the minute I get over Bean Hill. And you're coming down that hill pretty fast. Then you should, you need to move it as far down that hill as humanly possible, not up the hill. That's stupid. And it's dangerous. They're going to create a dangerous problem. I understand the bike thing coming across. It is a wide thing. But that's nuts. That whole thing should be moved to the bottom as far as you can get it and not up that hill one inch farther than it already is. Yeah. Well, we are trying to keep, I mean, part of these improvements, they, they, sh they couldn't require right-of-way acquisition because this is such an ambitious schedule to, to implement. 
Um, so it's still yeah. stay within the layout of Milestone Road and Tom Nevers Road. I was just going to But that's move it as far so to the west as you would get it. The layout and do what Linda's saying. Move it as far that west, direction. I guess. I don't think they west. Have the room yeah. on, on, yeah. on doing that. Well, then they better, they just not, shouldn't go that far then. They should go something in between. Because that is crazy. She wants to move. I don't think so much. This. Yep. This like this. Oh, yeah. 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 Get she away from being here as far as you can. Wisconsin, yeah. you know, a little bit. The whole thing. She or isn't saying do not it. do it. But the way the land is. Yes. Now, Mike, where's my double lines? He's I mean, you've got to have that. It, it's on your it is? Oh, no, 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 no. That's fine. We'll get to it then. Because, okay. I mean, Brian's on the phone, and I don't want him to, like, fall asleep. That's more important than any of this stuff. Getting people to stop passing on Sconset Road to Bean Hill. It's ridiculous. It is. What other Try to pull out of Russell's way. Okay. What other amendments? <laughs> it's, it's no, it's 100%. You can't move tra Russell's way, but you can pr certainly put the double line. We talked about that for two years now. Um, well, so what well, else? Those are the major. Those are the I mean, if we have to to work with the state, I was going to use another term, but Brian's on the phone, um, and and work with them on some of this stuff. We we need to be able to have the authority to get the double lines in. Because I know we can't do it ourselves, and it's really yeah. complicated about how to do that. You've been at this for over the two years. Is absolutely part of this. If there are issues with the, inter the intersection being realigned, I, I think staff would number one like to know exactly what are the, all those concerns that you have with the realignment. Because I think there are attributes and virtues to, to those improvements. They improve safety. That's you talking about? Trying to do. You talking about pulpits and monoway now, or are you talking about just this? Uh, any of these. Well, I, I've got to see. Mon I've got to see what Monomoy really is. We had a lot of concerns with Monomoy. I don't know what you've come up with up here. Do you have a picture of the Monomoy one? Uh, I, I do. We can Trying to make Monomoy more of a intersection. Yes, and we had problems with the visibility coming over that hill, and we yeah. had problems with the bus stop where that was, and we had problems with all kinds of stuff there when we talked about it months ago. I, I will say that the. I mean, the That's not helping. The staff submitted. They, they're still being incorporated into the final version, but this does have a. a, a we solved, yeah. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, I so mean, it's. I'm not so is, worried about this, this one. Uh, there, there's going to be some adjustments. To but the system. way the the width will work for trucks turning right, mm -hmm. there's an occasional, uh, not a full semi, but there's a lot of tag along type trailers and dump trailers. That's that'll work fine. And why do you like have that. an NRTA stop in the way? We but talked about that the last time. Uh, and that's pretty much going to stay in the same uh, location, okay. but we do have to have a, a, a bus stop at this. At this uh, Why? At the, because it, it, the NRJ says it's a popular stop. Where are the people coming from? <laughs> road. So They're certainly the not stop? driving down there to park Sorry. to get to it. Mike, do you got your little pointy thing? Where's the stop? Show me the right stop. There. This is the bus pull-off. Oh, oh, oh. Right. And that's going to end up being a bike path anyway. Some point, isn't it? On the north side, you can see that they mm -hmm. tried to create a, 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 a stub of, yeah. the, of, of what it would look like. Yeah. yeah, and we have that land. Exactly. Yeah, that's the greatest idea I've never heard of. Well, didn't we have a problem? Up. We expressed concern about that NERDA thing. Is that there now? I don't follow. Is NERDA have a stop like that right there now? It's it's in the street. It's actually in the island. The island is the stop. Yeah. Right. Oh, I think this is going to create is? a visibility yeah. issue. I think it's going to create all kinds of issues. You won't be able to see a damn thing if you're coming out from Monomoy Road, taking a left to go to the airport. Nothing. She's you talking see nothing. about. She's talking about here, like sight lines right here. No, yeah. the other side what too. Is coming down. The other side. I'm talking about that bus in there. Well, you're going to the airport. You're not going anywhere. Well, until the bus is gone. Um, mm, no. I wouldn't say that because you you're seeing what's coming. No, you can just pull out Matt, the, uh, around. You're it. taking a left to go to the airport. Yeah. Oh, left there. Left heading you're not going to see anything Wisconsin. coming out of town. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I had How a problem with your monkeying with this intersection to begin with, but okay. um, so that's I didn't want to go up the hill any further. Uh, that would be needed. Number one, authorized public review next uh, meeting in February. Uh, approve it in March. March is also the preliminary public hearing. Apollo will be to take these kinds of questions. I'm happy to talk to Linda after the meeting between now and then to better understand these improvements and that Mike. the concerns are going yeah. to be verified. And, 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 uh, 
addressed. Well, I think what we wanted, Mike, was to push the whole thing down as far west as possible so you have as much time to see people coming over that hill as possible. And what they've done is they pushed it back up the hill again. We wanted it to go that way, not towards cable vision, but go everybody down the hill further. And it again pushed all the way up to the east side of Monomoy. Yeah. And there's still all that extra room where it could go this way. Yeah. We talked about that very clearly. We did, and we did verify that we did have 400 feet of sight distance during when uh, uh, Beta was here during the, the old South Road corridor study. But so those concerns were brought up. They were verified in the field with Beta. Now GPI is taking this on and. and there's some adjustments to the design I showed you, and those were sent to them, and they're incorporating that. But it's it's a, a basically the, the same improvement that this commission approved as part of the old South Road corridor. No, it did approve it. I know because I was against the Pulpus Road. We even got to that, and I'd rather not even get into it. Okay. I, I, yeah, Mike, I don't know, I don't know a whole lot about the project. Obviously, Pam and D five know a whole lot more than I do, but I do remember that being part of the discussion, if you're talking about the bus pull off on the north side of the project, that there was some grading that was going to be required there, um, you know, for do the slopes and, and the pedestrian loading area, and that um, GPI was going to do some additional surveying there. So um, that point, and then the other point I just want to make, I think we're looking at probably, you know, summertime to advertise this. So, yeah, you're probably right. Like, the first design meeting is probably going to be somewhere around next month, and it may actually, you know, be premature to, to amend it in even in February, um, but it is something we have to amend in at some point. At some point, because we've got a placeholder in the SIP for this for this H SIP rural fund, and this is the project that we had picked um, last year with Bonnie Pole, and she's our safety person um, to amend in. So yeah. So this isn't going to be part of that, Mike. He just sort of said something that made me want to ask a question that I was going to avoid, but this is in the list. For the fourteen point nine million, just saying. The short term portion of Pulpus Road yeah. is not in that local request. The it's not. Way, uh, intersection, the path, the full implementation of the path on the North Side Road is not in that. Okay. But if that is, if the, if the bus stop is put in place and the intersection is reconfigured, then you're correct. That that whatever the shows it in the list. Hundred thousand mm. dollars. Yeah, it's it's. Complicated look. It's complicated. To remove that during the capital review process would. That's one of the things I talked to you about before, mm -hmm. making sure that we don't get. I mean, this process here is yeah. nothing. It's yeah. easy to deal with. There's not a big audience. It doesn't. When you get to town meeting, though, and some of this stuff comes up, that's what concerned me yeah. about that. And that'll just mean that uh, although 15 million <sighs> was. If, if it's approved. That's what the authorization. It's a placeholder. No, no, I know we that. We need to obligate all yeah. of that. If we no, I know. Other projects that are paid for through federal state aid, that just means that less money is obligated out of that yeah. authorization. Okay. So no, I understand that. I, I've asked all those questions with Brian okay. Turbot, but that's fine. So we'll move along so Brian's not, you know, in the dark so much. Okay. So what else do we have to, so we're going to get the striping. This is really huge, Mike, and I really absolutely, appreciate it's, it. It's absolutely in the design plan. It has to happen. Okay. Brian, just for your information, Brian. When you're, yeah, sure. when you're listening to people like us talk about this on Nantucket, we're thinking nine months versus the rest of the year sometimes. Some of these things we go, okay, this is really good for nine months, and then the rest of the year we don't need it. But we have to, we have to realize that that's not how these things end up. That it's a year-round thing even though we don't need it year-round. So that's, some of us struggle with that. We might not say it, but that's what we're thinking. So yeah. sorry about that. We're not Boston. No, no problem. I like it helps me like yeah. hear the you know the feedback and the project stuff. Just you know, make sure you, like just follow up with Pam, you know, and uh, make sure she's aware of, of some of the questions raised today, so you know we can we can work with GPI and you know see what adjustments we need to make or if that's the desire. So so they're using all betas information and they're making their own whatever. To right. do this? Okay. Correct. And there's some other recommendations from another consultant called Tool Design Group, but they, they did the road safety audit, so we're trying to oh. pull in all these different ideas, and, and again, a lot of this has been reviewed at a, at a few different co committee levels here locally. Traffic safety, bike yeah. pedestrian committee, this group. Okay. Um, okay. It's interesting how you say nine and three. It used to be three and nine. 
<laughs> I know. Do we have True. anything else in there? Is that we don't have a vote on? So this we. Thing tonight, so right? this is already scheduled. The tip amendment is scheduled yeah. now. Uh, the dates. I'm going to wait for Brian to give me guidance on exactly when we need okay. to do the amendment. This is almost an FYI. This okay. Is the, the scope of the project and the, these are tentative timetables for a. Advertising the review period and approving the uh, the amendment. So no yeah. vote on this. Yeah, I don't I don't like putting things in the step until we get the scope finalized. And this is you know one of the reasons. This is pretty common occurrence with all of our projects. You know we have stuff at the um, you know end tower comes in. I mean this one's still in preliminary design, considered preliminary design. So you know there's, there's a little bit of time left. But um, for this very reason, I don't I don't like to then things in because we put it in at a certain cost and the cost changes and then I gotta re send it back to the feds and then it raises all kinds of questions. So. Um, we got a little bit of the time, but you know, Mike's just putting that on your radar that we'll have to amend it and sooner or later. Okay, thank well, you. One quick comment. Yes. And maybe it's a question. It's interesting the safety measures for vehicles gone down in both cases. And this is, Mike told me this is statewide, these numbers. But why, how can you, uh, how come the bikes have gone up 4% a year? That's item D. We're going to talk about that. Can we okay. Just okay. But, um, I'm ahead. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we got public review period and project scheduled. Do we need a vote on that one? Uh, again, these are those two are FYI. The okay. next next year's tip uh, and UPWP will need to be approved by the uh, schedule that's shown in the uh, the report. Essentially, the March uh, meeting will review at February and March meetings. We'll go over the scheduled projects, and then as customary, we'll we'll do the public review in April and then approve the tip in May. May. Yeah. Um, so the. Uh, those are the purposes of those meetings. Uh, and just an FYI, the, uh, you know that our big project, the next big project is other than the milestone improvements, uh, Bartlett Service yeah. Road. Uh, the, the preliminary design that hasn't been submitted just yet. Um, therefore, to, to meet policy and programming projects, we're, we're not, a, we shouldn't program that project in FY19. We should program it in 20. And if need be, between now and a year from now, if that project is ready to go, there's no issues, then we can amend the tip again to uh, move from FY20 to 19. Yeah. Okay. So just an FYI, there are probably no projects program for 19. We'll just have to amend it at a later date if that roundabout project is ready to go. What about the fairgrounds one? Uh, that's going to be a local. Okay. Locally funded Out of project. the 14 right now. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we can we don't need a vote on C. No. Uh, okay. Not on B or C, no. Okay. So now Brian's back on for his... Safety performance. Am I up? You're up. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, just on the, the tip schedule. Yeah, same thing as last year. No, same timeline. I mean, the reason why we we're on the schedule now is is to align with the CIP. Our CIP is developed alongside of our our SIP document. So last year was the first year we did that. So that's why everything seems earlier. Um, just because in the past, I think we. We've endorsed tips in, you know, as late as June, sometimes July, and now, you know, we're, we're pulling that back to, to May so that we can get CIP and tip approval by the board in June, and then I can submit to the feds um, in July, and that gives them plenty of time to actually approve the, the document um, prior to the federal fiscal year. So I think, you know, looking from the regional standpoint, you should probably, you know, be picking your projects in March. I mean, I, I kind of called that a preferred list, even though you're not really sending it out for comment in April. You should pretty pretty much have an idea of what projects you're going to program in March. So, but it sounds like you're that's what you're gonna, you're going to do anyway. So that's good. Um, okay, so performance measures. Um, Mike, do they have the the presentation that I sent you by any chance? Yep. That, like, yeah. Flyers. I yep. have the cover slide up right now, and if you tell me to go to the next slide, I'm happy to switch to the next slide. And we have hard copies okay. in our packets. Brian? Yes. Yeah, it should be. Yes, it is. It yeah, is. we um, have it. Let me see what page. Page 25 on. in yep. our packet. 23. Yeah, starting on page 25 of 81, looks like. That's the, that's the start of the presentation. So, all right, next slide, Mike. Um, so, just to set the stage a little bit here, um, Back in, you know, Map 21, whenever that was um, established, there was this um, requirement for state DOTs to establish performance metrics, it's off. It's a lot easier. which has been continued under the current FAST Act. So the intention of the measures um, at, at the cusp of, of its inception was to begin tracking um, statewide and regional trends and then consider those trends for future investments. And the major three 
um, performance measures, or PM, as you'll see me refer to them throughout the, the next couple of slides. Um, our PM1, which are the safety measures, um, MassDOT was required to mm -hmm. adopt those by August 31st, 2017, which we did. Um, PM2 is the pavement and bridge performance measures, which is just the percentage of good and poor condition on the NH system, and that is all public roads, that's not just statewide roads. Um, PM3, similarly, system performance measures, CMAC and treat measures we have to do um, by May of this year. So, each one of these cases, the MPOs have 180 days from the time that the state sets their own targets to either adopt ours or set their own. Um, and this is a point that I've been trying to, to get across to the regions. Adopting a statewide target does not mean that equates to your region. So if you're saying, you know, statewide something is decreasing by a certain percentage, that doesn't mean that the region is accepting that that is exactly happening there in our region. We understand that, you know, different structure, different folks, right? Like, different things are happening in different regions. We don't expect it all to be the same. The only thing that the region is saying by adopting a statewide target is saying that they agree that that is what is happening um, statewide. So, that being said, um, moving forward, just go to the next the next slide, Michael, the implementation, implementation timeline, please. That's kind of what I just I just got done talking about. You know, when we have to actually set these targets by um, the date that the MPOs have to adopt them by. So, in this instance, the safety targets the MPOs have until the end of February to do that. And then the updates or amendments piece, that just means you roll that to your certification document. So if you adopt the, the statewide targets for safety, which I'll get to in a moment, um, you just roll that into your 19 to 23 tip. Um, and you just have a narrative and you say, you know, NBEDC is adopting a statewide targets, this is what they are, and we're going to work with MassDOT on, you know, developing or like a bid program and complete sheets and all that kind of stuff. I actually have a draft narrative that I'm going to give to all the regions because at this point, um, I haven't heard any dissent. Um, that includes Boston, but I just presented on, on these targets last week. So, um, yeah, that being said, Mike, you can go to the next slide and we can just get into what the targets actually are. So, the five safety targets that um, were required to be set by um, the DOTs and MassDOT and the MPOs are total number of fatalities. That's just, that's just a total sum number. Um, rate of fatalities per 100 me vehicle miles traveled, or VMT, um, that is uh, determined from our HPMS um, projections. And Bob, Bob Fry here at, at the office, he, he provides those projections to Bonnie. Um, I'm not exactly what the growth rate was there. I can, I can find that out and, and, and let you know that. Um, but essentially, we, we have the VMT from each one of the past years, and then we project that out to, to calendar year 18, and that's how we came up with the VMT. Um, total number of serious injuries, similar to fatalities, is just a additive number. You just add that up, and, and it's that number. Rate of serious injuries per 100 million BMT, same as the rate of fatalities per 100 BMT. We just use that projected rate of BMT, um, and that's how we establish that number. And then finally, the total number of combined serious injuries and fatalities for non-motorized modes. Um, that is not just by content, that is all non-motorized modes. That's people on skateboards and segways and all that kind of stuff. Um, so those are, the, those are the five. And Mike, you can flip to the next slide. So um, the first two targets are relative to fatalities um, statewide. So the chart that you see there was um, is reflective of five-year rolling averages. So we took the um, the total fatalities from 07, 08, 09, 10, and 11, and we did an average, and we came up with 371. And then we did the same thing for 08 to 12, and then we did the same thing for 09 to 13. And then we used the best fit linear line, because the last data that we have is 15, and we projected that out to what we feel the rolling average is going to be from 14 to 18, and then that's how we came up with that number. Okay, so for calendar year 18, MassDOT's target for total fatalities is 352, okay? So that's how we came up with that number. Um, similarly, we did the same thing for the fatality rate, okay? We had the, the VMT projection, we had, you know, the total number of fatalities from the average, that's just this 
street division for 100 million VMP, and the rolling average for that is, is 0.61. Okay. So do you have any questions on that one for how we actually calculated it and how we're projecting it out? Because this is pretty much similar to how we did the other three. We just took that rolling five-year average, and we projected it out to calendar year 18, and that's how we came up with the number. Okay. The bike one I'm looking at now, like Matt was. Scary. No, you don't have any questions on this one. No, do I don't. No, I don't. No. Okay. 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 This is this is also based on federal guidance that we got because they, they understand. You know, we have a program of projects already in place, right? If you're setting a, it's weird that we're also calling this a target because it's calendar year 18. It's not like we can change what, what the trends are, right? We can't just say, well, we're going to throw an extra 30 million bucks in this, and then we think this is going to reduce fatalities in calendar year 18. It's unreasonable to think that because you've already got projects that are in construction. You've already got, you know, projects that are in the pipeline. So really, you know, when you're looking at the last data set that we have from calendar year 15, it's reasonable for us to, to have this approach for, you know, how we're setting that target. So that, that was just kind of a background for how the, the train of thought went into um, developing those. So, like, just moving on to the, the next slide. Um, this is the same thing. We calculated the total serious injuries in the same way. So, you know, these are these are trends that we like to see. You know, obviously, we want to see fatalities decreasing. We want to see serious injuries decreasing, and we want to, you know, continue that. Obviously, the, the goal is a the overarching vision, vision zero um, goal, but um, you know we're we're encouraged to see that um, these categories are decreasing. So similarly, the calendar year 18 target for serious injuries is 2,896, and then the rate per 100 million VMT is um, 5.01. Okay. Question. Now, Can you hear me? The last one. Um, the total non-motorized fatalities and serious injuries. This is one we actually had to think oh, about. Oh, okay. Ryan. Okay. So, Ryan, can I stop you for a second? In the opposite direction, it's going in the direction After, we do not out. want it to go. Um, we have, you know, annual percentage change of 4.881%. Um, and the last data set of the rolling average that we calculated between 11 to 15 is showed yeah. 541. So, for this category, instead of saying we're going to, you know, keep doing what we're doing and you know, we think this is going to be 619. We weren't comfortable with setting a target for calendar year 18 that showed an increase. So we flatlined that, okay? So for calendar year 18, MassPod is saying our target is 541. Now, all of that being said, is 541 achievable? Potentially. Um, we have, you know, a program of projects in place now that weren't in place in 15. We're investing a lot more in bike and bed. We're investing a lot more in complete streets. We're investing a lot more, you know, in our, in our safety um, programs and things like that. That it very well could be much less than 619 of what it is now. So, that, you know, all of, again, all of that being said, we weren't comfortable with saying 619, so we flatlined it. If we do not meet that target and we meet all of, all of the other targets, then we still are considered meeting our performance measures because we have to meet four out of the five performance measures in order to meet our target for statewide, okay? So if, if it turns out that we don't hit the 541, whenever we do the look back at the end of calendar year 19, then if we meet the other four, then we're still meeting our performance measures um, on a statewide level, okay? So if the MPO chooses to adopt a 541 target, they're saying that MassDOT is, is looking at, you know, calendar year, year 18, and they feel that 541 is achievable. If they don't meet that, if they meet the other four, then they're still going to meet the performance target, okay? So that's how that was calculated, and those are the five performance measures. So before I actually go to, like, next steps and what this means for you guys and, you know, how you would have to roll this into your certification documents, I'll pause and allow you to ask any questions you have. I just, I wonder, how do we compare on all those measures to other states and or other countries? Do they look at that? So, no, that's, that's a good question. And, and so what we're going to do for all of these measures, for PM1, PM2, and PM3, we have to report on all of these in October. We're just in the target setting process right now. So we set this in August. So we're going to set the pavement and bridge, and then we're going to set the CMAC and freight stuff. So in October, there's going to be a portal, an FHWA portal that's going to go live 
and all the state DUTs are going to put their, their info in there. And from what I've heard from Federal Highway is we should be able to see other states' information. Um, it's not available now, but it's, it's going to be in the future. So that's a good question because that's something that we're all really interested in. And then on the bike part, what do you, is that, mm -hmm. how do you, do you attribute that? You know, that seems fairly high to me. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. It's, you know, it's obviously something when you look at it, it's, it's not scary. Not good to see, but yeah. the data, the data is not nearly as good um, on the bike and ped side as it is on you uh, know the, the crash data and and, and stuff like that um, yeah. and the serious injuries that we have. So that is something that we really want to work with our regional partners on, especially in the aspect of like bike and ped counts and things like that. But for the the cusp of like why that's going up. There's several reasons that we think that is. One is that people, we've been, um, you know, promoting no share. There's more people taking those modes now, hence you're increasing those conflicts. Um, so that's something that we have to be mindful of whenever we're moving forward. And okay, we're increasing those investments. Yeah. What's the type of infrastructure we're putting in? Are we actually making that infrastructure? you know, as safe as it can possibly be, rather than just putting in a bike lane and saying, you know, we're providing another motor transportation, which is good, but we want to make sure we're also making them as safe as possible. So we, we definitely know there's more people biking, and we definitely know there's more people walking. So we think, without, you know, having the hard data to point to, that that is one of the main driving factors behind that. And you also think, I hate to say this, talking on your phone, walking. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking on your phone on a bike. The other comment I'll make. It's definitely on. increasing. The other comment to make on this, if you get better data, that number will go up. Because if you look at Nantucket, our data here, uh, th there's plenty of people that are injured that don't get counted. Well, I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, so I think that number yeah. will increase. It's not going to go down. So they would, no, no, oh, oh, I, yes. If, in other words, uh, Brian, if we, if we had hard data for bikes and walking like you do with cars because the police are called and pictures and all that, you'd probably have it be in the thousands. What? Yeah, you know, you, you know, know what I mean? Thing, like, we're required on the federal side to use a, a certain set of data. So for this, we had to actually use, like, MassDOT crash data. And what's the other one? I can't remember. There's two sets of data that we, we could use um, required by FHWA. Bonnie, our safety person, she was using um, hospital data. Oh. Boston, which was, which was much more accurate. But mm -hmm. for setting the federal... Um, setting the federal measures, we couldn't use that. We weren't allowed to use that. So that's another interesting piece is either the type of data that you're using also makes a difference. But I also agree with you. Yes, it very well may be like, you know, the better the data gets, the worse it looks, and that very well may be the case. Um, yeah. But as you can imagine, we weren't comfortable with setting a target that was higher than, you know, 541. So that's right. what we went with. Also keeping in mind that if we meet four out of five, we're still considered you know, to be meeting our performance measures as a state DUT. Now, let's say we meet three out of five, okay? That means that we have a penalty we have to pay into. So that means we have to program all of our portion eight to funds, which we generally do anyway, which is roughly like 30 million bucks or whatever a year in federal aid. Um, the other penalty is we have to do an each SIP implementation plan, which is like, we have to say how we're going to move away from that, okay? How we're, how we're going to actually meet four out of five if we're meeting only three out of the five. Um, but those are the two penalties as they stand now. But we won't know that until the end of calendar year 19 when we when the Federal Highway um, does a look back on what we set for 18 and then determines if we met the targets or not. Yikes. Question? Yes, go ahead. Brian, I'm on the next page already. It says that... Yep. Um, MPOs must either set their own five quantifiable safety targets or adopt mass DOT's targets as an action item by February 27, 2018. That's correct. So if, if we don't set our own targets and we adopt mass DOT's targets, that's like more than the population of Nantucket in the winter. How do we, is it reasonable to, for us to adopt them just to get out of having to quantify it ourselves? So, again, coming back to the original thing that I said is that you're adopting a target that is statewide. It's not yeah. equated to what's happening on Nantucket. The trend lines may very well be close, and some of the other regions have done that cross-comparison mm. to kind of show, 
you know, this is what's happening in our region, this is what's happening statewide. Nine times out of ten, I haven't seen any, like even in Boston, it was, it was pretty much trending the same way, okay? So it wasn't like, while well, one region saw, you know, like in bed is going down, or the non-motorized motor is going down, and, and, and the statewide is going up. Um, I think what you would find, you know, if you did that cross comparison, is, you know, four, all four of them are going to be, you know, trending downward, and that one they're going to be trending upward. Um, you do not have to report on these. So all the MPOs and the TPOs, by adopting mass on targets, there's no reportable target that you have to give to us. You're, you're just adopting, you know, our target, and you don't report to Federal Highway, or, you know, you don't report to us. If a region chooses to set their own targets, then they have to report on all five of those targets to Mass DOT, and Mass DOT has to agree with the methodology that that region um, comes up with in order to um, adopt those targets. Are you finding out that MPOs are, are just, good, good. just adopting the, DO, the uh, DOT's targets? Are you finding that most uh, MPOs are just going ahead and adopting the mass DOT targets? Yes, I anticipate all the MPOs to do that. Um, I think six of them now have adopted. Um, and also, you know, keep, keep this in mind. Too. Like, <laughs> we have a program of projects that are in place. They, they call it a target for calendar year 18, and this is something that board members have struggled with, and I initially struggled with, and like, because it's not really a target, you're just accepting Data. You know, Their rationale. The trend line is going yeah. like yeah. a tracker okay. of, of the program that we have in place. Yeah. The idea here is to actually like it's a starting point, right? You're just saying these are the trends. Okay, those look good. That one doesn't look good. And then considering that, whenever we're doing future investment, um, and you know the type of infrastructure that we're putting in our project. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very reasonable for a starting point to accept the DOT targets as a starting point, and then moving forward. You know, if, if we see that, you know, there's something that on a statewide level that we want to do um, and maybe the region, you know, wants to do something different, that that, that would be reasonable to do. Um, we're also going to be revisiting this every single year, okay? So calendar year 19, we're going to come back to you with the same thing. And you're going to have to uh, either adopt ours for calendar year 19 or you're going to have to develop your own. So it's, it's not like it's something that we're not going to continuously have to do and report on to stay on top of. Um, the PM2 and PM3 measures um, are biennial. So the pavement and bridge stuff and the NHS and the CMAC and freight stuff, the travel time reliability and um, all that is, is going to be adopted every two, um, every two years. So this is the only one we actually have to come back to the MPO every single year on. Okay. okay. I that got required, you. That would Sounds like too much information. Then. Mike. That's the problem. That requires a vote then. <laughs> this does, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll accept the motion to... I'll make uh, a motion to adopt the Mass DOT's targets for 2018. Second. I mean, is there a second? Excuse me. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Unanimous. Uh, Eleanor, up there in the back. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, Brian. Listen, Brian, that was a mouthful of really good information for us. I don't think we've ever... No, but I see what you're doing, not you, but like the system, you know, uh, you're looking at what we've done, we meaning the state, has done to promote bikes, promote walking, but promote safety in all these different projects, and if more people are getting hurt, you know, it's sort of like, okay, are we making them get hurt? No, there's, we're promoting health. I mean, people are walking. Yeah, right. e a bike path is a people path now. It's not a bike path. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on them. That's why they're 10 feet wide instead of 8. I mean, it's, I, I don't see how the numbers are going to go down sort of as a natural trend when more people are on bikes and walking. I, I, I don't see it. It, 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 it. That doesn't mean anything's wrong, though. Right? I mean, if, if you get hit on a bike path simply walking your dog, that isn't because the bike path wasn't done right. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. Yeah, I, I know. It's, 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 it's really difficult because, it, you know, we are promoting you know, mode share, and we want to put these facility, facilities in, but we also understand, like, there's only so much you can do from an infrastructure point. And even on the investment point, and this is the point that I was trying to make to Boston last, you know, was it last week I presented on that thing, is that it's not just 
sense how bullets throw money at it either, right? There's an educational yeah. component. And that's I right. You touched upon some of that, like, you know, if somebody's distracted, they're looking at their cell phone. You know, there's, a, there's, there's so much other, it's so much more granular on that target than, than the other ones are, I think, because on the other ones, it's, you know, you can do traffic signal stuff and, and, and signage in it. It's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit easier than, than what this one is. And this one, it's just, it's so much more, um, you know, there's so much more involved, I think. And you can't hear an electric car coming. Okay. Well, so, you know. one, com one more comment now. <laughs> like, a personal experience on the accident front. My wife was on her bike, on a bike path, and she was run over when someone coming across the path from a, uh, from a parking lot and pinned under the car. He was, uh, he was looking into his back seat with a kid. And I think, the, and, and it's that time of year in the summer. What I think happens out here is that we've too often we designed for the cars and we're trying to move the cars quicker. I think it's important that we start mm -hmm. designing for the other uses. And I know that that's part of what the state is trying to do. But and we need to design for it. But we also have to enforce for it and change the mentality. The mentality can't be to move every move the cars quicker and everybody else waits. So I, I think it's going to take a while to change oh, yeah. people's mentality on it. Well, what was the car doing crossing the bike path? It was coming, coming out of the Without uh, getting parking into lot? politics, Brian, yeah. really I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. What's what's safer, a roundabout or a four-way intersection <laughs> with stop signs? Oh, with people man, wave, with people we waving. We don't have roundabouts in with, Pennsylvania. So. Well, <laughs> we're supposed to be. We're, we're supposed yeah, to copy when Europe. I first started, when I come up here, the only time I drive is actually when I have a, a state a state vehicle and I enter a rotary, and I'm just like. <laughs> what do I do? Um, I get really, really nervous. I, it's, it's a comfort level. And I think that that's also another piece. Yeah. Is how comfortable are people using the facility and how comfortable are, are people having those facilities next to them? And, yeah. and we're still not there whenever you have, you know, a, a, a bike lane abutted to um, a car and the car still... You know, Wins. our mentality is still like the car is first. Yeah. So, and I see it every, I walk home every day from work, okay? I walk down Boylston Street, I see a conflict almost every single day, and it makes me cringe because it's just, <laughs> the car just naturally, you know, it, they see the green light, they want to turn, but there's a, there's a bike coming up the lane, and it's just getting, getting people used to looking out for them. Yeah. And getting the bike, you know, users used to looking out for a car that's coming to turn. I think it's, it goes both ways. So, yeah, um, yeah the, the comfort level is certainly, certainly a big, big piece. Pedestrians and, and bikes don't have the right of way in a rotary the P or the circle. They just, cars just keep going. People can't mm -hmm. cross. Bikes can't cross. That's my problem with the circles. I agree. I like them. They're actually safer for a bike. I think they're safer. Not they're for safer a human, for a bicyclist. Not for kids trying to cross <sighs> apartment. That's what. That's the only concern I have. We that one. we have it going in fifty ways here. We got bikes blast through a stop sign, but scooters. no bikes gonna do that. Scooters. <laughs> scooters. I, I actually don't have an issue with scooters. I just want the roads <laughs> to be wide enough to pass them safely. But they just uh, get right off it's uh, it's complicated over here. In Europe, they have bike lanes painted purple everywhere. That's not happening here. And <laughs> that isn't going to happen here. Nope. I mean, it's. <laughs> We're sort of ignorant and stubborn and sort of new and old and all in one body. So, anyway, thank you, Brian, very much. Are you staying on the phone? Yeah, I hope that was helpful. Again, I know yeah. that's a lot to take in all at once. I've never um, seen those statistics before. I do think the logic, like initially I, I was kind of against the, the logic of, of saying let's just use trend. Because trend lines, let's be honest, trend lines aren't targets, right? They're yeah. not. But... You know, if, if you want to have a starting point, you have to see where the trends are going. I mean, it's like a budget for is. deaths. Okay, so that's the, it's a good starting point, and we just go for it. So for you guys, what this means is you just have to roll this into your pit document. I have a draft, like, narrative I'll give to Mike. That just yeah. How we came up with the numbers, you put that in the pit document, um, and that'll suffice for, you know, calendar year 18. And then we'll come back and do the same thing next year. So okay. Well, thank you very much. We We will. So, Mike, we did the vote, right? Yep. yep. Okay, so... We're does Brian go. have to stay on the phone? Is Brian staying with us now for <laughs> dinner? Is he having dinner? He can have dinner. He doesn't have to. Is there anything else he needs from me? I mean, as far nope. as, like, schedules or, you know, tip stuff? You okay with him, Mike? We're good. He's good. I think we're good, Brian. Okay. Thank you very, Bye. very much.
Okay. Right, Take care. Day. You too. Bye. No, no, pick up the thing. Pick up the oh. pick up the thing and put it back down. There you go. Crack it electrocuted me. Anyway. Yeah, I was Okay, sure. so Mike, the capital improvement plan which I have looked at for four months. I'm nauseous with it. So go ahead. Yeah, this is what do you want to show anyone? Another informational uh, we're supposed to talk about this in uh, November and December, but those meetings just didn't happen. Uh, this is just to present to the commission uh, the schedule of, of transportation projects that are being uh, uh, requested at town meeting. <sighs> you, you probably know these better than we do. You've read these so much. So yep. um, if there's any questions about any of these projects, I'm, I'm happy to answer those. But the uh, Old South Road corridor improvements uh, list all the recommendations that were part of that study and uh, the balance of these improvements um, are, are also recommended uh, and, and even some out here projects. So I'm happy to discuss I do any have, one of them. I do want to talk to you about one quick thing. Yeah. Um, complete streets and the whole Spox Avenue, how it got kind of turned into a big, huge project instead of to Norman Moore's. Okay. And just for the commission's knowledge, I mean, this is going to happen. I mean, it got the money is confusing. The complete streets, I explained it to Capitol as the other tip. I, I, I can't give it like you can. You're not there at these meetings, and it gets really dicey and confusing. So I explained the 400000 thing in as part of the whole thing as like, well, it's like the tip, kind of, a new one. That it's a source of funds. It's a source of funds, kind of like the tip, but it wasn't, but it's hard to pin it down for budgetary purposes of to, okay, we got to fund 700 something thousand out of something else. So that was an issue, Mike, that is moving forward. We're going to have to have a, a real technical info an answer to that because it's 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 weird to have to answer it because no one knows what that is. It's kind of a new thing, okay? okay. But I agree with what BPAC recommended because it was a BPAC thing to idea, wasn't it, to continue the down? Of yeah. Sparks yeah. One yeah. So I think it's good. It's just if 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 cl complete streets is going to be a yearly thing or a it, whatever that's going to have to get tips easy to understand because everybody kind of understands it. Sure. Nobody's ever heard of this one. Okay. This is brand new. Yeah. It's a brand new thing, and it needs to have some kind of definition. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So we need to vote it. on this, or we just we've seen it before. Okay. Q and A. So if there's no questions, we can uh, move on. Okay. So we'll go to packing. Very, it was very good. The communication was very good um, oh, in developing this, this plan. It, it includes a lot of their maintenance projects uh, in this plan. It, 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 we're trying to make this more streamlined and, and better informed every year. I think we did a pretty good job this year. Yeah. 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 I'll comment if I can. I, I'm, I'm happy to see in the 2021 20, 22 that there's more money going to paths and other things. I think that's important, and I think just on a percentage, you're going from, I don't know, 3 or 9 percent, 32 to 55, you know, 40 percent. So I think we should be keeping it in that level until we have those projects straightened out. You're not going to get people out of their cars if there isn't an alternative that's safe. And so I think we really have to continue to focus on other modes of transportation at the same time that we're fixing roads and things. I'm not saying not to do that, but I'm happy to see that, in the, and it's a high percentage. I think you should keep it high till we've solved it. So. Okay. Thank you, Matt. I agree with that. I, I just think that it kind of proves, though, the way you've moved things around, that that transportation plan is not, it's, it moves, it changes. It's just you have to have this document every so many years. It doesn't mean that we're not doing something till this date. It means that it's a placeholder date, but it could change. So, is there a advantage to putting, showing them a high number? Is that sort of the goal? Is to say, hey, we have twenty million a year of stuff, or does it really do they care? Um, I don't think we're thinking about it that way so much. Other than when we budget each project, obviously we, we try to put the amount that we actually need with some yeah. contingencies, rather than uh, under budgeting right. the project. Right. Um, for, for FY19 
seems pretty ambitious, but I think that's where we move from. Okay, so we can move on to the pack of management. Mike? Yes, and I mean, there's a presentation in here that I, I, I don't think that I, you want me to go through, but I'll just hit on, uh, well, first of all, the, the, the work that was done by uh, WPI, I coordinated with the Civic League on, uh, with a team of four students um, on just seeing what state of the art as far as parking management and surveying the community to know what actual strategy they wanted to, uh, to realize, whether it was a user fee or a, a, a unit time fee. Um, so we surveyed the community, but this also dovetailed with some efforts of the Board of Selectmen. The, the, the Selectmen had wanted to uh, uh, progress parking management strategies as well and, and try to implement uh, and, and indeed to oversee it, get a funding mechanism in place. And uh, uh, so it was, it was really uh, what I was working with the students is that this very rarely happens that we work on a, on a, on a project that actually is trying to get implemented at the same time. Uh, but it, it was helpful for uh, working through the board and working with the students to actually do the outreach portion of it. Um, well, Nat and I met with them. Nat was there for a couple hours. I was there for almost two and a half hours with these kids um, over at our building last, I think, in December, maybe. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, so you all might be aware, I mean, the information is included in the packet about the motion that the selectmen approved uh, about setting up a parking commission and a parking benefit district and uh, set, setting up a pricing mechanism. Uh, the implementation is uh, a, a narrative of that is, is in the packet below for you to look at. This This is in the, uh, the, the uh, I believe, the draft warrant uh, for approval of this town meeting uh, uh, to set up a parking benefit district and uh, some type of entity to collect the funds that would be realized from parking management. Um, Has the selectman advertised for transportation and parking commission yet? Uh, no. No. Because there should so be Warren somebody from us. here. Huh? Warren, Warren has to go first? Yeah. Because there should be somebody from here mm -hmm. or planning something. Mm -hmm. Mike, is there a way? I mean, I didn't realize we were going to get into this conversation. Looks like one of my statements is in this thing from these kids. I remember oh. saying it. Um, did you, I mean, you're this traffic safety stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So much stuff goes through them. I, I sort of really like how the B pack has developed. I mean, it, that's like brilliant to sort of be able to, they're like an arm of the MPNDC for bikes, and really it, it kind of fits everything that we do, but more focused. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the traffic safety committee could be part of this parking, or should be, or should it be separate? I'm just asking what you think, because you're there every meeting. I don't think it would be all that different from what traffic safety already, already does, does now. That's what does. I think, too. No. But does it need to be enhanced a little bit? Because I don't particularly, I mean, sometimes some of the stuff that goes on at those meetings, like they just get stubborn. Yeah. And it's like, wow, let's talk about this, you know? And then all of a sudden, three meetings later, it's like it's a different meeting about the same subject. You see what I'm saying? I do. So I think that this is part of that. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Yeah. And, and I think the rationale that this traffic park committee is that a lot more issues would come through that yes. committee and be vetted through that committee and as a recommendation yeah. to the It has board a lot more focus on traffic safety really deals with a lot of issues this way. And what happens now. I, okay. I will say about in the owner that really put this in the package is just kind of highlights yeah. this, uh, okay. the, the outreach statistics that the, the students put together. Because mm. um, it, it really gets to the crux of what the debate is within the community. If, if, if you do want, we just assume that parking management is embraced by everybody. Just make that assumption. There's a number of different ways to implement that. Mm -hmm. Again, with a user fee, a sticker program, which has been recommended by this commission. <clears throat> Uh, or go with meters and have an no. hourly rate. So the, the community was surveyed and it was pretty split with a slight favoritism towards the user fee. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight is just who are these people, or what, what is the demographic that wanted each one of these uh, strategies? And you know, it's, it's, if, you, you, if you park downtown several days a week or every day, you're apt to, to prefer a, a, a sticker program. If you rarely go downtown, uh, once a week or uh, every, every other week, um, it, you're apt to just want to pay hourly. Yeah. I, mean, it, 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 the I understand what you're saying. It's not going to hit your pocketbook as, as yeah. much. Yeah. Um, and again, if you go for the time, how off, how long you park downtown, uh, it's, it's pretty skewed that if you park longer than two hours, assuming that it's an hourly rate, 
if you park longer than two hours and you pay more, then you're probably going to want a sticker program that, that would, you're not billed by some unit of time. Uh, but it's just amazing how when these, uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody did the math in their head when they're answering these questions. How, how's this going to impact me financially? Um, and it, it seems to be skewed towards uh, the, the least burdensome, of course. Uh, obviously. Mm. But that was the test. That was the question that you know that was flushed out through the surveying process. Yeah. Um, but I just thought that was interesting and something worth sharing with this group about who actually are the people that are being impacted. What wasn't as clear to this effort, what I don't want to share as much, is the financial impact of a particular user, a year-round resident who goes three times a week downtown and had to pay hourly uh, with uh, a low uh, demand fee of, like, say, 50 cents or a high demand fee of, say, $3. How that multiplies and how it calculates out through an entire summer season at the end of the day, it came out to hundreds of dollars versus a $50 for yeah. a user fee. Yeah. But you're subjected to, uh, to time restrictions. Right. The other thing I'd highlight with this is that the uh, parking rules and regulations, and the and the justification for those regulations, try to get to the we try to encourage parking turnover. And if you restrict parking by a particular time, you actually are incentivizing turnover of parking. I think that's that's really the uh, if you had the hourly and you could pay per hour, it, it would you're either going to Disadvantage, burdens and disadvantage people. So we can't afford to pay by hour. You're, you're burdening that population greater. Uh, but if you if it's not an issue, if funding isn't an issue for you, then you can pay to stay all day, essentially. Uh, and that's really counter to the, the policy of the, the existing parking rules and regs. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you're are you, are you incentivizing turnover, or are you allowing the pay to stay all day mentality, where you're going to have less opportunity to park. Well, then maybe some of us who've got post office boxes like Leslie, myself, and Andrew who keep them downtown <coughs> on purpose. Otherwise, I'd never go into town. I'll never go into town. I'll take my box out Registry, of there. Registry. Yeah. So you, we won't even bother to go downtown and patronize the businesses and the restaurants down there. Well, here's, here's so you can't make it. If it's if you it's too onerous for those of us who live here year-round, we just won't go downtown anymore. Pretty well a tourist town now. Yeah, Matt. I leave my oh, box downtown oh, on purpose. Oh. Otherwise, I would never go to town because everything's in town. Yeah. I leave it downtown. Andrew leaves his downtown. Leslie leaves her downtown. Otherwise, I'd never go into town. It's almost like a rite of passage when we go into town. We see each other at the post office all the time. I mean, we'd never go downtown if we didn't deliberately leave our boxes down there to go downtown. Well, Everybody really, in the bathroom well, no gets the delivery. Box. I go downtown. <laughs> No and I don't want it to be burdensome for us to continue to go downtown. Well, d depending on, I'll, I'll, or go I'll, to the movies. I, I'll I'll speak on this a little bit. Depending on the depending on the, right? We can't add, you know, two point something cars per house and think that the, that we have, and we're not adding any more spaces downtown. We have to do things differently. So the question becomes, in my mind, do you, do we value parking, and how do you place a value on that? Uh, the, one of the things talking to the consultant, one of the worries about it, just a straight sticker program is that it, it, it could actually not make it uh, less crowded downtown. It could make it more so. If people feel mm -hmm. like they're buying the right to park downtown yeah. and they stay longer, so and then they get up. They, they, so there's only a limited number. Uh, the reason that demand management mo is in this is that's a way to look at this. You have to set your price and set your times such that there's a space or two open on every street at any time. And if you have principles and you have a group, whether it's traffic safety or some other group, I would think it would have to be another group or a combination of them, a rep from there, a rep from here, and a few others, however it's set up. That group has, you know, has the focus to look at this and set the, the prices and the times and things properly. Uh, just just selling a sticker and saying we're going to do the same things we do now and we're going to we're going to enforce it the same way. I don't think that that's going to improve what's happening down there. Now the way a lot of these places, a lot of pe places that this is successful, what they do is any money it's collected goes into making things better for that neighborhood. If it's a you know resident parking or they they make it better, you know they they uh, improve bus service, they fix sidewalks. The money goes to things that people can see. What typically happens, if you read a lot about this, is when you first do it, the uh, businesses hate it, everyone's upset, no one thinks it'll work, and then a year or two later, everyone's in favor of it. They, they, adopt, they, get, they get 
they change their method, what they do, they figure it out, and then all of a sudden they're all positive. Uh, I'm not, I think in public input's important and a vote is important, but at the same time, on this board, you know, or on the select board, you're put there to do the right thing, and if the right thing pisses everybody off for a while, that's, you know, you still have to do it, I think. But you shouldn't and charge somebody for going into town for 20 minutes to go. Well, to you don't have to. It depends how you set it up. You could set this up. The first two hours could be free, you know, almost anywhere. Like, it could set up the first two hours free, and then you pay 50 cents. But the key is, like, so and what, what's happening now, if you look, there are streets that don't get enforcement, so people know they can pull in at any time and go there. There's, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that move their cars two, three, four times a day. There's no cars there. When I get going in the morning, three, four in the morning, and go to work and drove through town, there's nobody Nobody's around. In town. Yeah. And by you know by seven or eight, it's locked up tight. And so so really, you really what we have to do is get is put money into alternatives and get people, especially the ones that are there a long time, out of their cars. You know, we've got to have a bus at the end of their road that they can go on and take and and make it worth their while to do it. Make the bus. The buses should be free, and in, in my world, you make buses free and you charge for other things. You know, I don't think we're going to get there, but you need it, and you can't, from a selectman standpoint, this isn't something the selectman can deal with three or four times a year and get anywhere. Yeah. It's too complicated. There's a million other things that are going on. Yeah. So, I, you know, which is why when I wrote this, I was writing that it has to go to a commission, you know, a, a parking and transportation commission that focuses on this something more creative and we had years ago chamber of commerce i was on the downtown partnership i don't yeah. know if you remember that one yeah and i was on the executive board and we had a group that was talking about nothing but this issue yep. and trying to come up with a bunch of different scenarios and that was the first time we suggested an nrta type thing right you know with the ski resorts and get their jitneys et cetera, et cetera. they all said we were crazy now look at it yep but there, over the years, there have been really good things suggested. It's just there hasn't been a group that to focus on it that had the time to focus on it and to move the to move the ball. Right, and we have, yeah, we and we've got it. We've got the parking downtown, but we also have the residential areas around the outside of town. And even when there are good suggestions, I think two or three years ago, I don't know if it came from Mike or Andrew, but there was a suggestion that you know people that have off street parking you know, don't get a residential sticker for free, the ones that don't get it, and then you, the next people get it, and that went over like a lead balloon. But it was actually the right thing to do. It was the right way to focus it. If people have off-street parking, they've got their own space, and they've taken at least one space, if not two, off of the street. So why should they then get to park on the, out on the street anyway? Right. So, you know, so you, start co you just start correcting things like that, which, again, would not be popular. I wouldn't be mad at you. But if you start correcting those things, then all of a sudden you might have some more spaces opening up for people to come down to go to the mailbox or come down. And you might not have to charge as much or they might be able to stay longer. So I just think you have to really, it, it comes in my mind, comes to do you, you know, do you value the spaces and, and do you really look at it for everybody's good, not just for the loudest people or, you know, like, and I think that hopefully we'll get there. But it's, it's not easy. Well, when you... When you look at downtown parking and you see what happens, like the thing on Ash Street, which is the most recent sort yep. of thing, I walked over there with a tape measure mm -hmm. after that meeting. I, honestly, I did. Yep. And I'm like, they don't need all this space on the other side of the, retake, the street taken away because the car ain't backing out straight across the street. It's turning. There's plenty of room. Yep. It was, it's really hard. When we look at them from the planning board, we look at, okay, so a curb cut is a parking space. Sometimes it's like it's not fixing anything by giving somebody their space because now you're taking a space. And if not giving them a space, they're on the street. So it really doesn't make a difference because you're taking away a space if you have a curb cut in, on a road that has parking on it. Right. We looked at one of Mulberry last year. Give it to them. There's nobody parking on Mulberry Street. You know what I'm saying? A floor yeah. street. Yeah. There's no part at all. So it's okay to put them in a space because they might be down on Union otherwise. So that's different. But Matt, I understand what you're yeah. saying. It, it's like a kind of a wash, a lot of the stuff. Well, you could, you you know? you can, if you actually were able to, which you are, the license plate readers and things can have GPS in them and they know where you <laughs> are. If you actually you know, let the person park in front of their own driveway, and whoever was doing the enforcing oh. could recognize they were in front of their own That's driveway. That's a good point. 
then you now, would gain those that, spaces. That's like the moped issue. Yeah, you, you got to train every special, every little thing to know. Yeah, it's like we we're going to be computerized. Everything's going to be that's computerized. A, I, that's a good one. All right, I knew, what you just said like right that. there. I knew you'd like that. That's a good one. I would never <laughs> have thought of that. But the, the person that, that you owns have to get the curb cut should be able to park in front of the curb cut. But then you have to get them. What's but wrong with that? But you have to. <laughs> well, what's wrong is the police will say, "How They'll do we give know? them a ticket. We can't do it." Here's an example. Like I know. We also have to be careful in town, like on Union, where my grandparents, my uncle's house is, <clears> that you can't necessarily park in front of your driveway because you can't block the guy on the other side of the street from being able to no, back I out. Know. And that's up and down it's Union, true. the whole yeah, so that So there may be situations like that. The other big problem is the police, anything that isn't easily understood and told to all their guys yeah. is hard to enforce. Yeah. So, you know, and I'll give an example, my favorite example. When I was on the board the first go-around 15 years ago, Nat and some people went out and measured all the streets and said, okay, these are the two streets that people have to park one thing up on the sidewalk. Yeah, one, right. yeah, all the rest, no, they don't have the to park. Yep, gay and, yeah, so there was a couple streets, and that was it. And that was the policy that went to the police. And I get back on the board, and I look, and it seems like, no. and I ask, hey, have you got the policy? You have it still. Nope. Well, how come you really don't pull it and do it? Well, because it's too hard. This, the, all these guys, how can we train them? It has to be the same one way or the other. And so, so really, it, we have to think about how. And I'm not. And I understand because they have a million other things going on. It's the last thing in their mind. But yeah, it's, but it should be the first in the attack because it's historic and the way it is. You know, like Mike. That's why I brought up traffic safety. I can't stand some control. of the stuff that gets said because it isn't know, real. Wheelchairs and everything else can't get up. You, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Like my little moped thing, and my little thing about pulling up to the yellow line on each end of a space. That's like 20 spaces a day at any given time downtown. You know what some people twenty. Some, I'll bet you in the summer. You know what some <laughs> communities do now? They'll at those yellow lines. They will build. They'll do a bike corral or a moped corral in the yellow. That's in a good the idea. yellow. So they'll take they'll take yeah. a metal thing and they'll say you can park at the end of Orange Street. They make a corral and say you can park inside this. So you actually you show where it's allowed. Yeah. And and so you might you don't lose any spaces or you might lose a couple spaces, but you gain space for all of those bikes and mopeds. Except again. They're on Union Street to give an example. They're directly those yellow lines are across from the other guy's driveway. Yeah, so you, you can't do put anything Union. in it. He's anyway. talking about like a so there's there's at some the places that have worked at their end. corner of Union Street, like yeah. the beginning of yeah. Orange on the right. You could do it there. There's probably eight or ten places downtown if you went and looked that you could fit a bike corral. Yeah, Santa Street is like two or four, three of them that could work sure. right at the end of India. Where it, yeah. right in front of Black Eyed Susan, where the guy already parks his mo motorcycle half in the yellow, that could be all bikes. You know, it wouldn't affect anything. You can't turn right on Santa, so who cares? Okay. What's in that space? We can't solve this right now. But anyway, what we're doing is really reinforcing the need for a separate committee or commission. Yeah. It yeah. has to be all somebody like it, it, yeah. it has to be somebody with Jack on his mindset. Yeah. Somebody that has seen this and doesn't get too <laughs> crazy. <laughs> well, no. Doesn't get too crazy with things. You've got to just know how to be loose. And like yep. Matt's saying, you can't teach the summer special. for 24 years. Yeah, he did. I was on the traffic safety with him for 18, and he knows more about you have to all just, that than anything else. Our roads were not built for Phoenix. I mean, it's that simple. You can't well, make it that not way. Built yeah. for so, the, so that so on to, so that means you can't add you know, any more cars into there or any wider cars or anything else. What what there's a guy, Don Schupa, did the high cost of free parking. One of the things he wrote is that the parking on sidewalks doesn't just happen here. It happens on college campuses. It happens in California. When there's too many cars in a thing, they start parking on the in the green spaces and things. Oh. And he calls it a broken window effect. And he's absolutely right. You have one broken window, you don't fix it. You get a second, a third, and before you know it, they're all broken. Well, and I think that's, a say, that's what we have to realize is not enforcing some of these things and not caring about them makes it worse and we well, need, you know we're going to build all these we're going to spend millions on sidewalks and if we allow people to park and drive on them again we're going to waste the, that money i mean we've got a lot of money in here on the sidewalks mm -hmm. so we need to we mm -hmm. need to ensure that those sidewalks are not ruined in the first season I, anyway w w w okay. my favorite topic. Well, i'm going to come up and see you when we talk about that um I, my I favorite topic. i got a great picture <laughs> of that um so mike do you this is uh, informational correct uh, yeah, WPI. I like no, they did a great job. We had a no we, had, we had a fantastic no conversation vote, with yeah. them. Good. Yeah, yeah. So no vote. Okay. All right. And that's free. 
you can take some kind of to coordinate. But no, but no. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Governor, you know what I mean. That. We don't have to write a check for that. Okay. Okay. All right. So our meeting schedule, we got that. We have to uh, vote that schedule, but the question I have on the schedule, what did oh. we ever vote? Didn't we vote to go six times a year? What happened? We did go to six times a year. What yeah, are we doing? What happened Mike? here? Andrew, Mike. Well, let me, there, there are a bunch of, I mean, basically the March meeting, the July meeting, the September meeting, we have, Mike's got some other things pre scheduled, like the May and May. Okay, so some of these will be at a planning board meeting, like half an hour before. Or not like at all. Stuff. No, oh, no. not at all. Okay. Now on the third Monday, where are we? So, I don't want this every month. I mean, the, the only no, non meeting which follows our six meeting schedule is the one in November. So, the extra ones are the September, like I said, September, July, and March. I think we have enough going on that we really need to keep the March meeting. Mm. Okay. Um, and I'm open for discussion on July and September. I'd rather get rid of July and August. July, I don't see any need for. Do we, Mike? Or I, mean, I, well, I don't mean to go around you. I'm not uh, what I was doing. Like that is, uh, this past year, you might remember the corridor study. Uh, basically, timelines. And, and, but that was a major study that was we had to do that during the summer months, and then have our public outreach during the summer months when people were here. Uh, we're not really doing that this year with a, uh, a public outreach. At least it's not scheduled just yet. So, I mean, I. I Agree with Andrew. Like a July, this past July, we we, had, we didn't have a, a meeting, so that might be good to, to not have September. I'm not sure what will be on the schedule, so that might be something we could pick up as well. So we could we? So could we leave reason. the schedule as is, and take off a meeting, say, two or three meetings before, like when you know more information? Just we have to it? vote on the schedule. Yeah, but you can you can do that. You can still do that. Yeah. It would be a motion to be made to amend the approved schedule and if you either change date or remove the date. That is all oh. posted amply in time and I put it on the website. Well, then we can always call a meeting if we need it. So I'd rather make a motion to get rid of what was it, July, September, and what? November is already off here. So she's talking about putting it on the website as a schedule of people reading it. Yeah, so if we have yeah. to have an emergency what? meeting, we have it. Anyone want to rely on that? No, but if you choose to, let's say, in August, I'm not coming in July. September, meeting. And if we Andrew. have to have a meeting, we can well, post it. Andrew's got an answer. Go I think that if if you're if we're moving back to the to the year you know, once a month, mm. we should talk about that. I don't want to do like that. If we are posting meetings, there's an expectation we're having these meetings at these times. So I think you should think through. I mean, we can call special meetings. That's the right. way it's been. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I don't think the July meeting is really productive, quite frankly. Our no. annual meeting is June. We have that scheduled. Um, the September meeting, we may, because we may have a special town. Well, we are going to have a special town meeting, right? Yeah, we will now because of, we because of that posting last week. So, again, I... No, not because of that. Well, okay. I, I think the July meeting is not necessary, quite frankly, and I think September is questionable. I think I would recommend the July meeting be take be removed, um, and then you can decide on the September. What about the March meeting? Do we need that one? In August, you need or no? August is our standard schedule. So we should so do. We always do. We always do June and August anyway. Okay. Um, the March meeting, I think we should keep just because of town meeting. Um, okay. April second, right? There are a number of articles of planning importance this year that. So we'd get rid of July and September, uh, at the moment, July and September, and if we have to call a special meeting, we call it. Okay. What about August? Well, August is a regular meeting. So I make a motion to approve the calendar, but without the June, I mean, without the July and September uh, meetings on the schedule as posted at the moment. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah, Miss Eleanor. Okay, so that's good. We'll get rid of them. 
Um, Prima. Mike, I mean, and when you need some little UP thing or something, you can just call a meeting and we can change this plane board meeting to 5.30, right? And it's not the end of the world to do that. We, that worked good before. Okay. I mean, I okay. think. Okay. Anyway, all right. Um, um, okay, Rima. So, you, Andrew, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Thank so you. There's a question. Oh. We need to fill in here, so this is on page 49 of your packet. So, the proposed date for her to start is February 5th. Okay. Those whose members weren't on here before, which is everybody but Nat, myself, and Jack, she had a lot of a uh, lot to do with the original. Yes. Okay. I'm not yeah. done. okay. Oh, sorry. Page fifty. It's the term is. Uh, I mean, the amount is nine thousand, and that's in both blank sections on page. You know, page fifty. Yeah. Two blanks with a dollar sign. Yeah. That is just so you're clear that it's 120 hours of work for hourly rate of 75. She's, and this is again, she's an independent contractor. Now, if you want to. Talk and she had a lot to do with a lot of the other um, master plan updates and issues and writing and drafting and. She's, she's done a lot of other stuff for us too. She was the editor of the master plan. Yeah. And what what I want her to do in preparation of 2019 or like is to do it. He's talking. Go ahead. I'm listening. Uh, to do an audit of the work that's been accomplished uh, over the past ten years. We, we have a good idea of what has been accomplished. What's still. Uh, yep, this, start this is the rewrite you talked about. Are we about. required to update the master plan every so often? No. I thought we generally did that. Generally, it's a good practice 10 years. Um, yeah. It has not been formalized into the Zoning Act update, which is not passed yet. <coughs> so it's technically nine years this year, though, right, Andrew? It's nine years. Okay. June of 2009, it was passed. Seems like only yesterday. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the contract. Second. Sec is there a second? second. No, Jack already second. Oh, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I have a question on it. What what is the process for if there are any changes in it? How does that? How is the? Is there any public process or inputs for this? How does it work? For the next update. Yeah, like how how does that work? Yeah, I think we would generally follow a similar process that we did the last time. There would be some sort of, uh, we did an update of the questions we asked the last time, uh, it was two years ago. Um, it's going to follow the same, you know, there'll be opportunities for public comment, what the, what the changes might be. You had some public comment online last time, I think. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. so you'll do for, the same. For an extended period of time, yeah. we would do that same open process. Um, we're, we're researching what other communities have done for their master plan. You know, there's basically, there's a community that wins an award every year for their master plan, trying to see what they've done. Who's that? Well, it's different every, different every, every year. year. Yeah. But we're gathering those examples to, you know, again, to see what kind of things we might want to improve. What we're trying to tag also is what exactly have we accomplished in the master plan and what's left to accomplish in the master plan. We tried to set goals. You know, actual goals, actual yeah. real things to do, yeah. not just encourage something or promote something, but say so many units by so many years. Right, exactly. So, yeah. where are we with all those things? Is sort of yeah. the, the task. Yeah. There's nine sections, right? Nine sections. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Um, you. Andrew's uh, Andrew's annual review and 
just for everyone's just to kind of bring everyone up to date a little bit on that is we have been doing a sort of verbal review for the last few years not written not written the little things we had to fill out the little things and um, little things. I feel personally that this is a better way to handle Andrew because we know him he's right here um, we know everything that's going on and if there was a different I think if there was a different uh, um, you know different people here a different system a different uh, feeling amongst us I think it would be a different animal we'd be looking at it <coughs> A different, a different way, but I don't. I think things are working very well the way they are, and I think that we should continue this. And I agree with uh, the verbal way of handling it. And anyone has any questions about for Andrew? Uh, Andrew has a statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to go over some of the accomplishments. Yeah. That I think are important. Um, I do think that um, there's been a significant increase in activity on housing that's been recognized by regional, state, and national uh, entities. Mm -hmm. uh, I just spoke at the Mass Municipal Association uh, this past week on Friday. Um, members of the Slough and County Administration were there. Um, and our bylaw on workforce housing was um, recognized by the state as an important uh, achievement statewide. Uh, our proposal on um, housing in our marketplace with other panelists from uh, different regions was accepted by EPA and that's going to happen in New Orleans in April. Awesome. So hopefully, I don't know that I'll be able to be at your meeting in April. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Jambalaya. Yeah. Actually neither of us. I won't be off. here either. Eleanor just put that down already. I'm not here with him in April. <laughs> I think that you've um, never been there. The, um, the wild. work I've, that we've done, and again, this work is with everybody. It's with the with you as planning board, planning commission, with the board of selectmen. It's not just me, but my contribution, I think, is important in moving all of these things forward. Um, the NISDA um, hmm. uh, agreement at the corner of Washington and Francis is an important uh, long-term goal that's finally recognized that took a lot of work and coordination between different parties. Um, there was a school exchange of land between the land bank and the town that involved a lot of effort. Um, can we continue to have a great uh, rate of approval of our Warren articles at town meeting, advancing the master plan and making um, strides towards goals that have been outlined, um, meeting the deadlines that were uh, talked about in the master plan. Um, our staff continues to, I think, grow and basically contribute. The transportation planning effort is um, robust. Um, the energy group has been um, assigned to our department. Again, we talked about the housing group uh, all making advances. Um, we've advanced customer service. Uh, you may have read about some of the building permit issues. We're now pretty much caught up with that. We've implemented basically a per diem uh, building inspector. Um, has come on board and got a lot of work done. Um, and basically through some, even though there were lost personnel hours, we've maintained consistently the amount of permits that were um, issued throughout the time. So that's a small amount. You know, we'd really like to you know, talk about oh, me, me, and um, the things that have, that have been accomplished, but I am proud of the work that, um, that I've been able to achieve in my team. Um, it, it's a great group, and I think that, we're, that we've done a good job. And I also just think that um, the proposed increase is completely within um, the range that's been discussed for other and employees uh, and some of my peers who serve as departments. So. When is the NISDA project going to go forward? Pardon me? When is the NISDA project going to go forward? I'm working on the it now. The building permits have are actually being issued today for the removal of the buildings. Yeah. Um, 
the um, final agreement between the parties is uh, it was maybe tentatively on the agenda for next week, um, but it may be it may go out a week or so. But I, I would guess that that is going to be constructed for the season. Is that going to have it ready for the season? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Mm -hmm. No, I just make it. Thank you. Uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else have anything? I do. Uh, I'll, I'll comment. I think the pay is within is within line of the increases. I have issues on how that's done uh, island wide right now because we should be doing, you know, we should be doing it uh, pay and benefit analysis, and it sh there should be a little more rigorousness to it. But I think you know for what Andrew does, I think that's in line. If you look in the last bit of our here, best practices. For human, it, probably, it was in the back of our packet. Talks about how to do it. It talks about cost, cost out collective bargaining. We don't really do that. We or we do it, but we don't do it well. Develop a wage and classification plan. We don't have that. You know, those are the kind of things that we have to do to try to get this stuff in line. Uh, I disagree. You know, I'm going to vote in favor of this, but I disagree with a verbal. Uh, I think everyone should have to write something down. I think there's things you can learn. You, 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 you know, the best. The person, the best person at a job, doesn't have things that they're not that they need to get better at, and I think that sort of process uh, forces, you know, some self-reflection and some back and forth with the chair. We all give our stuff to Nat, and if some of us have specific uh, items, then that's that's a better process than just say than just to rubber stamp something. I think you know my you know I've had my differences with Andrew on certain items. Usually, I'm about putting numbers to things, fiscal impacts of stuff, and he and I have gone back and forth on that for 10 years, and I would probably have that in there. But it's, but it's the point that everyone should ha be able to, you know, put their input in and have that shared and say, okay, how can we get better at that? Uh, so, you know, uh, but o overall, I think a lot, of, a lot of really good has been done. And I think, you know, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have a more robust process. Just so you know, because you've been on here for a while, we did send out the <coughs> evaluation sheets to all the members. Yep. I was the only one who consistently did it every single year. They would then email out again, please send them back. One or two would, would materialize at that point. Never did we get all 12. Right. In oh. all the years I've been on, never did we get all 12. And we were lucky to get a majority to mm. send them back. They just forgot about them. They didn't do it, whatever. It just, it was pulling teeth to get them back, oh, right. which is why I think we've moved on past that now because it's just not happening. I also think, though, the questionnaires, though, are... And it was tough. For someone like me that sees Andrew, you know, every other month, so so many questions in there, I just not applicable like I, I don't know the daily ins and outs working you know yeah, it was, it was but boil a plate yeah and I, I personally I, I, no disrespect I, I don't really I feel uncomfortable voting on raises not that you don't deserve it um, so and I, like the last time this came up so I'm going to recuse from the vote on that but I think you did a great job so far one of the things I want to say about Andrew is and this is that the amount of political that uh, <coughs> uh, rhetoric that he has to deal with, especially in the last couple of years, uh, not just the planning board itself, but Andrew directly is, and Leslie is, is pretty vigorous. Um, Facebook is now the new Slings and arrows. horrifying uh, cesspool of misinformation, and it's and pretty bad. And personal attacks. And I, you know, if I was in Andrew's shoes, I might be suing somebody right now. Um, or maybe two. Worse than yak. Um, yak was nothing compared to this. Is it? Really, I, have, I don't. Ugly. I don't, I don't uh, and, and the thing, and, and I want to, and I want to say, too. And Matt's been around a long time. Not he doesn't have to be on this group to be around a long time. No, we got. We have to. Everything's posted. We're on TV. There was a big push to do that. You would think that we are in, you know, another country. When it comes to, we didn't know about this. We didn't know about this. Nobody knew about this. Yeah, that's true. And it's like, how do you get out there with stuff when doing everything there is except Twitter and Facebook? Um, Andrew has an open door policy. I've gotten him 
people to go see him, make an appointment, <coughs> go to that desk and say, I need to make an appointment to see Andrew. You know, I'm talking about the general public now. I'm not talking about us. He has an open-door policy for anybody that's involved with, whether it's MPDC or other boards. That's, to me, that is the review mm -hmm. and the, if you have a disagreement or if you have a question, He's is accessible. his door. Yeah, it's accessible. not like you can't get to, to Andrew. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I, you know, I brought this up last year, I think, and, and there's been a lot of work done with Nathan Porter's uh, abilities has, has been increased. The land use issue in Nantucket, the building, how much land is, 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 is uh, developed, what's the percentage, uh, how much we've changed zoning to reduce build out, I mean, not, well, to reduce buildable lots or what, what could be built mm -hmm. is totally missed at town meeting. How much RC2 we've gotten rid of, how none of this was done prior to 2006. Uh, it's, it's fascinating, the story, and it's going completely untold. It's like it never happened. I got accosted today by a local again, which <laughs> happens to me constantly, and I have to give them the full story, and you know what? I can do it, and it works, because they don't know zoning. So I've asked Andrew, how can we, do we send out a yearly, with our town report, do we send out a zoning map to every homeowner so they can put it on the refrigerator? What do we do to get people to know that what we've done with zoning is not make more houses, more people, more cars, more. It's the people are doing it with their land. They've had the ability to, to build on it for years. They just haven't done it. Okay. Now you're seeing it, and that's what you see. And it's a tough, it's tough to, to, to straddle this whole thing. And Andrew and Leslie, I tell you, I give them a lot of credit because they've stuck it out, and they've and and they're still here and. I support them a thousand percent. And just for the record, I'm in the uh, planning use and um, uh, <laughs> housing, <laughs> housing thing, thing. Yep. Uh, at the building department. Really, uh, three or four times a week, I see Andrew in various different, uh, uh, I guess, meetings with uh, 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 people. His demeanor is incredible. His patience is, uh, I couldn't do it. Um, and I think. I just give my full confidence to him, and I agree with the the raise. Although I take Matt's, uh, uh, I guess, uh, note uh, about putting something on paper. It has a lot of value to it, uh, and I'm not saying I'm against that. I'm just saying for Andrew in this particular um, verbal uh, instance, I'm fully in favor of it because I see what he does on a, on a daily basis and. Um, not a lot of people can do that, especially not on the island. So it yeah, has my full backing and the support of the race. I'll make a motion to grant the uh, raise. I, I'd like to say something. First. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, to protect <coughs> Andrew from being so challenged by people's ignorance for not paying attention to what's going on, maybe there is a better way to get information out that is accessible to people so that you can say, hey, it was there in whatever was sent or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying for the newspaper, a lot of people don't read the newspaper. I don't know, but there there could be some sort of information disbursement that then that backs up the fact you should know this information because it's readily available. Because a lot of people really don't understand and they think it's the planning board that's forcing all this development. Mm -hmm. And it is, again, people's rights and people's properties. So Correct. I, I don't know what the answer is to that, but I think it is complicated. You shouldn't have to stop when you drive around in your Yates truck and explain everything to everybody all the time, like you do. I, I, mean, I try. It's, it's fun. Do, it's actually it become a second job or third. It's. Um, I mean, the mayor of it, it's, but it's you know, but it takes a long time to understand it, and then when you understand it, you feel. Oh my God! Nobody knows. Uh, it, really, they're not seeing what's allowed, even under their own feet. People don't understand. It's amazing, Matt. Well, I mean, well, it's, it's, it's amazing. I go back to the comp plan days and remember everyone argued about the build-out number. We sat everybody in a room for 
you know, two weeks and or, or two a bunch of months, and they came up with something, and lo and behold, the number was close to what they thought it was, and we updated it for a regular amount of time. I think that if that's still being updated, that should be shared, you know, and it's and it's not an actual, it's not a perfect number, but it's it's where you're going. I think people don't want to believe when you say we're going to have 25,000 cars and Old South Road is, and the consultants told us this, Old South Road is going to be impassable. You'll have to do it. No one ever know that'll never happen. You'll never see that happen here. That's not Nantucket. And now we're there quicker than they even said. And so I think some of it is pe people, it's just, it's denial of what's going to actually happen. And I think that's, you know, it, and so, you know, so I do think there's, there's, th there's things that, I, that need to be addressed and there's philosophical differences that need to be bridged. And I think, you know, other in this, and one of the differences is do you look at the figures and facts and numbers and try to base your decision on that or not? You know, and I think there's some people who don't want to think like that and don't want to understand that things have consequences. And so I think that that, you know, that, that we have to bridge that somehow. You know, and that doesn't mean that Andrew's not doing a good job or the town's not doing the best it can do. But, you know, we have some pretty complicated things. You know, I, I couldn't sleep a couple of weeks ago and I wrote out a list of only just the major things. You know, sort of an MOU down at, with, you know, MOU at Harbor Place and Island Home and blah, blah, blah. And it was a page and a half long. Wow. And I shared it with Libby, and it was, it was twice as long. And these, I only listed things that take some major intelligence, a lot of time and effort to understand the impacts. I didn't pick, like, simple things that we're knocking off each week. And it's substantial. And I don't think that the town has the resources and the horsepower to handle some of this stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and so I, I don't think... You know, and I, and I think it's in Andrew's office and in the town offices, I don't think sometimes that we have the time to write out a recommendation and put it there because we're so busy trying to get it done because the next thing has to be done. Well, and so something has the, to be... A lot on. of us... Go ahead. Get back yeah. onto the contract. I mean, I, yeah. I agree with that, but I think that... I, I really think, quite frankly, that there needs to be more... Yeah. I think that in terms of priority, there's way too much time spent on that and way too little time spent on the bigger, more important issues. Yep. Um, that's not my department. That's, that's yeah. an observation that I have for, you know, from 25 years being here. Um, I think, too, that some of your concern about financial things and other... I'm not a finance person. Mm -hmm. I've never said that I, that's my forte. Um, as planning director, that's not my role. And you have a, a totally um, competent finance director. You have multiple positions down there, budget analysts and other things. That's where some of this should be coming from. Right. I'm happy to work with them. We've, worked with, we've had a great um, relationship with them, and we certainly can, can get there if we get clear direction on right. what are the numbers right. we should be looking at or what are the factors you want to be looking at. But, you know, I will tell you now, I'll tell the rest of the board, if you don't know it, I'm not a numbers, I'm not mm -hmm. a financial person. I have, I have not, I don't have a lot of interest per se in it, and I don't have a lot of skill in it. Right. So, um, numbers aren't my, financial numbers aren't my thing. No, I understand that. And have personnel that, that, that you should be And actually, what we're doing now, Nat, is, is the process that if we had things written and went, this would be the pro this should be the sort of process that goes on in the evaluation, you know. And then we say, okay, look, how do we, you know, this is and maybe everyone knows this, but then you say, okay, Andrew, how do we solve this? You know, if we if we need numbers attached, then you can do it verbally. I mean, it's, it's going to no, be I understand, but I understand. But, <laughs> well, no, but I think, but to, to, to but to bridge some of the divides, the, it's sometimes difficult conversations if you don't have them. Then you don't have the trust, and if you don't have those co those hard conversations, then it's hard to move forward, and you end up with a split community on a lot of issues. And so I, I just think that's the you know. So well, I, you know I'm I'm in favor of this, and I you know I, we vo we should vote it and be done. But yeah, that's not even the issue. Yeah, but I think this is a good conversation to have. When we when we talk about this, you know, I said this a couple of years ago. I was afraid to ever say it on camera. Mm -hmm. People that come on the fast boat to work here don't need a house. It's true. Okay? The houses that get built for seasonal residents don't add kids to the school. 
the year-round housing that we all know we need adds kids to the school. Now, that's a simple little statement, but that's the stuff that's been coming out of some of this, these fiscal sort of impact things. It's stuff that we've never been confronted with until the last couple of years. All of a sudden, we're making kids at the planning board. And it's like, whoa, I didn't know we were doing that. You know, other than just cars. Then Rob and I, Rob Randy and I went to this Nantucket Community Association meeting this summer. <coughs> it, was, it was really good. The first question was, can we reduce the number of summer cars to come but keep our own service? You see what I'm saying? Like that's the, So you know what I say? We're lucky we're not Florida. That's all I can say. Because the weather would be good 12 months a year. I mean, the, the, deterrent, the deterrent of just the location we're at is about all we're ever going to get. You know what I mean about, about that, other than the cost. No matter how you turn to try to stop something or slow something down or eliminate something, it affects everyone somehow. It just doesn't work. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it, but as far as Andrew's contract, Linda has a motion on the floor, and um, God. I'll to, she's going to get mad at me. That's why I'm off saying. The rails. Uh, I don't I'll think we're off the rails, no. but... But there's a motion on the floor. Yeah. Is there a Jack, second? second? Jack already seconded it. Jack, Jack seconded it. Motion to approve Andrew's contract, and Jack seconded it. And Jack seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Sorry. Is that unanimous? And one abstention. Yeah. One, who's the abstention? I'm Andrew? Yeah. That's what I'm okay. saying. And Andrew. Somebody. Andy Bennett. We're accused. So, right, he abstained. He abstained. He abstained. 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 Okay, let's um, move on. So <laughs> I want to give um, something. <laughs> oh, the contract with the C Department of Housing and Community Development is that for you, Andrew? It's you no know, for the commission. Well, you know what I mean. Every year. That's what I thought. Uh, okay. Fifty grand, isn't it? And we use that for some of these small little. Projects. Whatever we any do. Of the, any projects that are on this list, that funding could be used for. Okay. It's a five thousand dollar local match. And yep. It's been used for board or study. It's been board yeah. Uh, board or study. I think these are ones. Well, I'm just speculating. It's come out and talk to you too much. Other than I know that it was used for the board or study and uh, a few of the transportation related items. Housing. Housing. Yeah. yeah. So it's so. We need a motion I'll to make approve a motion that. to approve that Second. DLT. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I did. And and Matt, uh, seconded. Matt seconded. Um, I just want to, um, on the other committee reports, I want to just make a quick comment about something that some of us know about, some of us may not. I want to give a, a really substantial plug to Remain for this co contribution with VHB that they're doing. Mike? I, I was in shock when I went to meet them the other day. That's pretty good stuff. Because what they're trying to do is take the in-town bike path phase one, two, three, that we've got phase, I, I kind of call two what we've done, right? Theoretically, it's the second phase, even though it got done first. It's the middle phase. Well, that's <laughs> right, okay? <laughs> we had a little laugh about that. But anyway, um, what they're doing is they're trying to circumvent help us out so we don't have to wait for funding, tip. It's sort of, this is good, what they're doing. I, I, I was pretty impressed. I, well, because I didn't know this was going on. For some reason, this skipped over me. I must have missed the email or not wrote it down. And when I got the, the, the message from Rachel, uh, this is pretty good. Okay. So the give agenda. them a plug. It's not on the agenda, so what? It's under other business. Uh, other committees. Um, Capcom uh, this year was more complicated. I felt like I was going back to Algebra 2, um, which wasn't one of my favorite things. But it's been enhanced a lot with the process with Steve Welch's new uh, system. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's certainly a lot more homework for people like me. I don't know if I can continue that, but we'll see what happens. Um, anyone else have any other I'll comment stuff? On Cap I'll comment on Capcom. We need to push it so the numbers come back, so it com comes to... Uh, Faster. Comes fa it has to well, start it has earlier. To start earlier. It has to start this earlier. This is part of, Matt, and good point. This is one of the things, like, 
special town meeting. I asked Don about this the other day. It really needs to be in September. Because when we have a special town meeting in November, it's like December. By that time, by the time all the next year's stuff starts, already started. Yeah. The process for April has started already. It's kind of hard to do unless it's one item. Yeah. Well, I complained last year about some of the late stuff and everything else, and we didn't really do anything. We tried to do something, and there's been pushback. It's we need to put it on it. We need to back into it. We need to go backwards and, and just and, and you know I'm trying to, and I don't know if I have three <laughs> votes, but I think we should say no. If stuff doesn't come ready, we should say no. Well, you know, it just it's too hard. It's too hard when you run a, when you get the ramp up. The staff is spending tons of time trying to keep it all straight. It's just fi finance did really good vetting and fixing this whole new policy of how we're yeah. doing it. Yep, I mean, they did great. a great job, Julia and Brian. Uh, I couldn't have done it. I had to get homework <coughs> done. I had to go see them and figure it out because <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. Okay. But I think next year will be better, Matt. Faster, but it, it was definitely a learning curve. I can tell you that. If you do it early, you'll also have more people that are around and haven't left for the, their seasonal trips. Well, they're well talking about October this is right now. Yes, it's different. October this is the right. department head stuff and the oh. budget. It's it's Budgets brutal. By September now. Yeah. So anyway, um, does anyone else have anything? <laughs> Otherwise, we'll motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, you need help getting up. No, I don't. That's what the kids say. But they don't have to help us. They're here. 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 They're